south of the United States, the blue waters of the Caribbean Sea once were known as the Spanish Main. This was because Spanish pirates sailed along these shores. Today, fast white steamships travel across the Caribbean with cargoes more valuable than pirates' gold. And officers in trim white uniforms pick up their golden cargoes from a place we call Banana Land. This land, as you see on the map, extends from Mexico on the north, includes Guatemala and Honduras, Costa Rica and Panama, Colombia on the northern coast of South America, and the islands of Cuba, Jamaica, and the Dominican Republic. Some of the capital cities of Banana Land are as large as Jacksonville, Florida, or Fort Worth, Texas. This is Guatemala City, as seen from the air. The streets and public squares are well laid out and beautifully planned. Some of the cities of Banana Land are cities of strange contrasts because they have been destroyed by earthquakes and since rebuilt. Side by side, you will find the old and the new. Many of the buildings are of stucco. The streets, however, are still quaint and typically Spanish-American. It is not unusual to see women with baskets on their heads out doing the family marketing. Many North American firms do business here. In modern stores, you can buy things imported from the United States. People who live in the city dress very much like the people in our own southern states. There are many churches and people go to church regularly. They speak Spanish, of course, as most of them are of Spanish descent. If you wanted to greet them, you would say buenos dias, which means in Spanish, good day. The people are very polite. Sweet frozen ice is as popular as our own ice cream. Every public square has its public water fountain or watering trough. These women are filling their homemade jars with water just as their ancestors have done for hundreds of years. In all middle American cities, the market is a very busy place. Here you see all kinds of strange sights. Most of the farmers who live around the city are Indians. Each morning they come into the city bringing hand-woven blankets, handmade pots and leather goods, fruits and vegetables from their small farms. Do you like ripe melons? Ripe red tomatoes? Bright colored peppers? Or perhaps potatoes? So you see the foods they eat are not unlike those in our own country. But now we've left the city for a trip into the highlands. There in the distance is one of the many volcanoes to be found in this part of the world. In the highlands, we find mostly all the people are Indians. Their transportation is primitive, old-fashioned. They believe in doing things as their fathers did them and their fathers were here long before the Spaniards came 400 years ago. Some of the Indians cannot even speak the language of a neighboring tribe, but when they get to market, they will have no trouble selling their wares. Just as soon as this old man hurries by, we'll take you into the next town. Water is not as plentiful as it is in most North American cities. A pool in a public square serves as a community laundry. Children here do a lot more of the family work than most of our parents ask us to do. It is a part of their education. Have you ever heard of the ancient Maya? It is spelled M-A-Y-A. These people are descendants of the Maya Indians and are said to be the oldest civilized people in the Western Hemisphere. When the Spaniards came and conquered the Maya, they found brilliant costumes, art, and a culture unknown even in Europe at that time. So now it is believed that the civilization of the ancient Maya may be among the oldest in the world. 
These then are among the very first Americans. Today, Indians grow maize or corn just as we have learned to do. That is their principal food crop. Only a few have their own cattle, and the farmer who owns an ox is a rich man. As you can see, their way of farming is very simple compared to ours. On higher ground, we find the cocoa tree. In Spanish, it is called cacao. Here is a cacao pod. The bean grows in this pod. It is from this bean that we get our cocoa and chocolate. The sharp knife he uses to open the pod is called a machete. Now you've learned another Spanish word. After the cocoa beans are spread out in the sun to dry, they are packed in bags and shipped to countries all over the world. People drink a great deal of cocoa, but Americans drink more coffee. Here are coffee beans being stripped from a bush. Did you know that they look like little red berries? Well, that's the way coffee grows. You might almost think they were cherries or cranberries. Although we call them coffee beans, they really are seeds that grow inside their red fruit. Coffee is one of the biggest exports of middle America. Large plantations may have a million trees and employ thousands of workers. Coffee grows best on high ground with good drainage and is found only in the tropics. Carts first bring the ripe berries or seeds to drying pits where they're unloaded to dry in the sun. Here is a typical drying plant where coffee beans are spread out in the sun. The outer hulls are removed by washing. Here you see men pushing the beans through a watering trough. This washes away the hulls or outer parchment. When they are thoroughly washed, they are spread out in the sun to dry. After they turn green in the sun, the beans are split, packed into bags, and shipped to coffee roasters all over the world. We all know what happens to coffee after that. Now huge streams of water being sprayed over a banana plantation is our first introduction to why this rich area is called banana land. Banana plants need a great deal of water. In the dry season, they have to be watered in this overhead way. Another method of bringing water to the plants is by surface canals. This is called irrigation. Here is a large banana plantation. And now before we go any further, let's take a look and see where bananas first came from. Bananas originally came from the moist tropical region of southern Asia. Alexander the Great found them here. In time, banana roots were taken from their original home to the east coast of Africa. From here, the banana was carried westward across Africa by the Arabs. Portuguese explorers before the time of Columbus found them growing here and took them to the Canary Islands off the North African coast. Around the year 1516, Father Tomas de Belanga brought them to the islands of the West Indies and later to the mainland of what we call Middle America. <laughs>